Campbell. Hello, you're all very welcome to this episode of No Blasters podcast with me, Kieran Bartlett. This week, I'll be facing off against Ma Bartlett. You know what that means. That's my ma, my mummy. Um, it's a mental episode, as I'm sure you can imagine. Let me walk you down the street to ho- to Hollywood's finest bistro, stroke cafe, stroke brunch house. Um, come with me to Joxer. Empty. Uh, come with me to Joxer. It's never empty. You'll be standing outside forever waiting on a table, but it's all good. It's open from 8 to 4. It's worth waiting on. It's open from 8 to 4 every day. Seven, that's seven days a week, like I said, every day. And... Um, <laughs> It opens late on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. You can book a late table if that's what you want. Uh, it's dog friendly, which is good news for uh, people that own dogs. I, I don't own one, but um, it's nice to go and look at other people's uh, what 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 type of dog other people choose to have for themselves and see does the dog look like them. That's what I do when I'm there. Um, so what else about jocks or can I yeah. Get yourself a plate of chicken and waffles, chaffles, and see if you can't get them or you don't want them or you think, I've had enough sriracha and maple syrup in my life this week. I can highly recommend the Philly cheese steak. They're also extremely accommodating, I've noticed, because I once went with our Kev and he asked for the Philly cheese steak without the meat. And they did it. They fucking did it. I was like, what are you even on about? Uh, they also do a thing called a Benny, which is like a ham hock sardo. It's very dirty. Uh, and then they have like a uh, nice like porridge and they also have like smashed avocado and things like that for hipsters. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's be serious. But definitely get in there. I had a 15 last week. That's not 15 orders of chicken and waffles. It's like a wee, it's like a wee, a wee slice. Very enjoyable with uh, with like cherries and marshmallows in it. So get on down to Joxer. You can also get them on uh, Instagram at Jocks are Hollywood. How am I remembering all this? And yeah, go and check them out. They're opening a new store in Bangor. Uh, definitely worth going to. That said, I'm also going to be performing my new show, Majestic. Brand new show, different to Goblin King. In uh, the Ulster Hall on October the 15th. Get those tickets. Get those tickets from Ticketmaster and the Ulster Hall. Come see me. It's going to be awesome. This week, Ma Bartlett is on this podcast all manner of shit goes down will take you through her crazy sordid love tales if she was if she was going to be described as anything by the daily mirror in the 1990s they would have described her as a love rat so um (laughs) i hope i hope you enjoy listening to all the many all the many sordid tales of her love life before she met my dad and then um obviously like we'll play a bit of fifa and then we'll go through the Biscuit World Cup. She also breaks out some sensational gifts for me. So definitely worth sticking around for. I might drop a C-bomb in front of her. Madness. Lastly, I'm doing the Ulster Hall with my new show, Majestic, on the 15th of October this year. Buy tickets. Nah. Do it. Nah. Uh, buy these tickets because I want to sell it out and uh, you can get them at Ticketmaster and from the Ulster Hall website. I'm hoping that by the time this advert goes out, it's already sold out and you're sort of shitting yourself about how you're going to get a ticket. Probably won't have though, but still feed into this. Give the Goblin King his coins. For anybody that gives a shit, it is a brand new show. It will be different from Goblin King. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome to this most special episode of No Blasters, so far, in brackets, with me, Kieran Bartlett. Today's guest is none other than (laughs) the mistress of our dawn, (laughs) Ma Bartlett is with us today. Unbelievable. We've managed to coax her into the studio here. The studio which she described earlier as this looks a lot bigger like on the podcast. This is quite a small so she basically came in and cut us the ribbons, so that was good. Um we've just recovered. She brought her own biscuits for the Biscuit World Cup. And uh she did ask me, you did ask me to do this. She wants to do the gift exchange early. So who am I? to say no to that. 
I have conning like now you know what the crack is with these gift exchanges. You're supposed to come here with something that costs you less than a fiver, and I'll give you something that costs me less than a fiver. The whole actually Ma Bartlett's the inspiration behind this because she would say like if you're going somewhere to somebody's house or something for the first time, she would go, you can't go in there with your two arms at one length. But you only get told that as you're walking out the door. So you have to buy something on your way there. It's always shit. I got you something. I got you these flowers out of Tesco. And uh, and, 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 and I've cunningly, I know I've cunningly left the price on a tenner, so you can see that even though the rule is spend less than a fiver, I'm more than I always, a fiver. I always go above and beyond for you, Sheila. I because see? you should, because you could never ever make up. Can't repay the debt. Thank you so you, much, Sheila. darling. I have some lovely like things them? for you. Beautiful. They're very colourful. They are very colourful indeed. They were the least battered ones that they had. I love the way you just, they're well, very colourful, they fucking. Lovely. What do you want me to do, ask them for a vase? <laughs> right, I started off because I thought, what will I get, Karen? Sorry, the phrase, I've started off, and you have a because bag. Because I thought, first of all, of Neil Kinnock, and I thought that might be enough for you. I thought of Neil Kinnock, <laughs> phrases you didn't think you'd hear today. What's Neil Kinnock? Neil Kinnock did this advertisement and said... A finger, a of, finger fudge. of fudge is just enough to Neil give Kinnock. your kids a treat. Neil Kinnock, the fucking yes. prim, the, yes. the prime minister, no, the fucking the MP, politician. Yes. Then I thought, what well, what could I get him next? And I thought, what does Karen need? More chocolate. Um, well, we're getting there. Right. Then I said, right, what would Jim want? What would oh Jim get God. him? That's my dad, by the way. And he would get him these and tell you to keep what he likes, the ones he likes, so you'll is know this, what it is. Uh, so is this, is this is Quality Street? No, it's not. No? I thought this was Quality Street. It's more Street quality and I was gonna be, than I was Quality going to be told to keep the purple ones. No, no, but you'll know what wants to keep when you open this. I can, you, I'll you. i say this, above and beyond, in terms of you're the only person that's wrapped the gifts so I'm far. I'm the only lady you've invited oh on God. here. <laughs> Well, William was on before. He, th he thinks of himself as a wee lady. So what ones Lic have you to keep? Licorice all sorts. The ones that Dad like. Let me see, I'll fucking get this wrong now. Yeah, he he, he liked them wee fucking That's the them ones. Wee ones. That's the ones. The wee pink and blue dots all over. So. I, do you know what ones? I, I like them, but my favourite ones are the ones that are just licorice. Yes. You know, okay. the, wee, the wee bullet ones, I like them. Reminds so me of growing up in West. <laughs> So I was wandering around the shops. Have you bought more than this? You also spent more than a fiver. Wandering around the shop, I did not. Because this gift is not just from me. Sorry, I just want to get this. This is good for the podcast. It's awful this is for people. From, this is from more than me. I was in the shop and I met this guy who knows you. Terrifying. And I was talking to him and I told him where I was coming today. And why I was coming here. And he went, I am absolutely delighted, he says. Tell him I wish him every success with a podcast. Well, I know what shop this is from. Oh, you don't. Oh, you will never this know is, what shop. This, this, this is a frame. It is. You've spent more than five pounds. I did not. Do you never hear a home bargain, son? <laughs> See, this is a fucking emotional gift. It's not an emotional gift. Unbelievable. Look at this. Two twanky, you are my inspiration, Bunter Castles. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's amazing. We're gonna have to find an actual spot for this to just be here. I hope it's in the shop. Not quite. Not quite, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well here. Thanks a million. Okay, now you not get gifts like that for man a year uh, older. No, cronies, I, I was worried there when I saw a frame that this is going to be so. You've, would I you've do tried that? to wound me with something emotional, you no, know? No, would I do that? Yes. I do that in the house. <laughs> in would public. I do it? <laughs> would I do it? I only do that in the house. <laughs> so you would do it? Yes, absolutely. Unbelievable. That was amazing. Well, as you might, you might be aware already, Ma Bartlett isn't a big FIFA gal, but. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll give this a lash anyway because everybody that comes on though blasters has to perish before me in this game. So, uh, 
for for now press right on that so just push it to the right the, your other right oh my god <laughs> unbelievable you can see how this is gonna go no push it again then right so uh oh jesus give us it because what did, uh, i did i already know it's got if i start if i what what you need to do is gonna just it's a it's a it's a nightmare i'll put you in as iron butler okay because if i start trying to change that right there you go so if i win does he get the kudos for it iron butler if you win that's i love i love the ambition um, so basically, as you know, on No Blasters, what we'll do is we'll randomize the teams, but today's a wee bit different. What team would you like to be? And I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I think I'm going to take a local team out today. I want to go, uh, where, where's, I'm gonna where's, be... the, where's the teams from here? Are they in the rest of the world or have the, are they out of it now? Is fucking Cliftonville and all not in this anymore? Fucking better be. Oh, they've taken them out. Did, when did this happen? Or would it be would it be on their eye? No, is that am I getting political here? Gonna get kicked out? No, because look, it's gone. <gasps> did you try in? I did. I did try in. I also looked on their O for occupied statelet, but they didn't. <laughs> they don't have it. Here I'll be. I'll be Bohemians, right? From the, the Republic of Ireland, and you're not being political. I know. Well, <laughs> fuck's sake. Should it say Ara? Uh, I was going to be Bally Clare comrades, but we cannot bother. <laughs> Who do you want to be right now? I, do you want to do, do you want to be Liverpool? I know I do not. Well, what about Gumbuckers? Do you want to be? Do you want to be? Do you want to be United or do you want? No, there's better be teams United. than United. There definitely is. PSG are the best team in it, I think. Middle swirl to me, they're bending you know. Do you want to be show us? That's the I'm only joking. No, no shows, I'll, I'll pick your team for you. All right, I'm just it's for speed. You pick your te my I, team, my team. Would you want to be do you want to be Paris? Has Who? Messi and Mbappe and all in it? It wouldn't matter if Messi was standing here, I'm still going to lose. It'd be amazing if he was standing here to watch because this. You know though, what I would it? ask him? Why? Oh, Nothing. why? Great story from Ma Bartlett. One time, do you want to tell this story? This is a good story. Right, so, so my grandson had got big coat, Ronan, big coat my nephew. had got a ball with Messi written on it. Yeah. it? he took it into school the very first day he had it, and they, they kicked it over the wall. Some wee dick right? kicked it over the wall, and it went into now. I'm not say what school he went here. It was St Malachy's, and he kicked it over the <laughs> he kicked it over the wall. It went into the jail, so it was gone. Yeah, as a whole lot of things. It yeah, went into a, the lot, jail a lot of people gone. lost right. their balls in Crumlin Road Jail. So. He was distraught. He knew his father would go mad because he took it into school. So I said, where did you get it? It's a nice way you tied bit there into the... Sports the... Direct. <laughs> I go down to Sports Direct on Boucher Road. It's a massive shop. I'd never been in it. It was a guy standing there. Would you not get like, clothes and like I that in Sports Direct? No? And I went down over to the guy and what I said was... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I wonder, could you help me, please? Have you any messy balls? <laughs> <laughs> it's because the guy wasn't using his manscaped. <laughs> but <it> <laughs> um, unbelievable. So if you press A, select your kit. Right. Right. Oh, God, I pressed so, it twice. Oh. Sorry. Fuck the team management. Don't matter, right? So we're straight in. And what right, am I doing? Now I'm going to show you the controls. In the this isn't even the real match yet. If you want to sprint, you hold in the right trigger and you use this to move around. So see the wee guy in the blue kit? He's you. Right. So start moving around. You'll see. What did I do this here? Aye. Uh, I'm doing that. He's I not know, moving. He, he's not moving. <laughs> he's, he's fucking is moving. Oh, I thought it was the one with the no, wee blue arrow. No, the one in the blue kit. The one with the All wee right. red arrow. Look at him. Right? It's good. They're just running straight on that post. I mean, concussion... Concussion's only... <laughs> pain is just creps leaving the body somebody said to me this week I thought Messi was so, retired does he not what's he no, still he's playing, playing on for this Paris. So, right, go ahead so this pass is the ball the A ball A mm -hmm. A's pass this is when you have you the ball you think I could put P on it wouldn't you for people like me <laughs> 
because there's only one game. So, what if it's... I thought was, was that the ever is universal. P. What, what if, what if, you, if you're playing Call of Duty, you don't pass anything in Call of Duty? Except for dead bodies, like, do you know what I mean? So, oh, like, this, is really, this isn't just for FIFA. Right, I'm with you. I Imagine forgot. you had to I buy forgot. a controller I for forgot. every I game. Forgot. That's I out. forgot, okay. Has anybody seen my Grand Theft Auto controller? I've only got the FIFA one. <laughs> I've only got the Chucky Egg one. <laughs> Chucky Egg is a brilliant game. You can get it online now for free. It's a, you're, You play like a wee, a wee yellow man and he runs about and you have to pick up bird seed. Isn't that right? And there's wee birds walking about. Pe- Sounds shit. Unbelievable. And when you get a few levels through it, like a good few levels through it, a big yellow bird comes out of the cage and, that's and when starts, you start screaming that is when you start screaming because he you're running around on platforms this big yellow bird comes out and it's fucking what the god what the, it's like a it's like a fucking giant moth in real life right anyway so pass boot like a chip like right. a chip right shoot right and that's a through ball like a through pass like a play it ahead of somebody play it Playing to another player. Aye, but like okay. playing it, playing him in. You know, like if he's making a run, you you're him getting from technical. Him. That's pass. That's boot it. Boot. That's. I'm not certain. Shoot. Right, go on. Right, and then when you don't have the ball, slide tackle is X. B is like a. We could be here for a. Fight, I know, right? I know. This is what I'm saying. B is like a stamp. Oh, look, I think the best way to learn is to lose the me quickly. Okay. And then we'll just talk shit for a while. I have so questions you've for you. You've been talking shit for the last 10 minutes. I, mean, I've been talk- I, thought, I thought you were go- going for it, Darren. You're going to say you've been talking shit for the last 35 years. Well, you have, but I wasn't I was going to be nice to you because everybody well, can hear this. unfortunately, I will not be nice to you on this game because, That's, like... Because you need to win. I have a problem. Yes. I know. So have I. It's both, the same. I was going to say, we'll both have the same problem, <laughs> Kieran Bartlett. So, it's Bohemians versus Paris. So I'm Paris and you're Bohemians. I uh, press I then. That'll get us. Oh here, I'll I'll hold it. There we go. Right, so you start with the ball and um we'll see how quickly it takes me to score six and um we'll go from there, right? Is that B to boot it? No, no that's a, X. a to pass. There you go. And then you run with you're doing alright with the pass and there you need to run. I am running. Oh no, I forgot to do that. There he's there running now. <laughs> oh, you actually did skin the shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> she skinned them. <laughs> so what am I doing now? Nothing. Wrong. If you want to change the player that you're controlling, which I'm not controlling anybody. Well, You've got the ball. See if you. I know, but then you can control one of your players. See this button there. Oh, you forgot to tell player. me about that. Well, I thought you know. Right there, you go. So you see, the, the guy you're controlling is the one that has the wee arrow above his head. Then right, and he's doing nothing because I forgot to move him. Aye. Oh, wait, I'm well, here, done. great challenge. Like, it's only, have, it's only fluke. To, uh, go, he's going to score. Well, here you go, Lee. That all right for you there, look. That was because uh, I So you can boot it with him. Right, where do we want now? B, boot B, no, X. B, B will boot it with a goalie eye. There you go. Oh, for sake. You haven't found your range while long passing yet, don't worry. You didn't tell me there was a range. Well, of course, like, I mean, you can't, he won't just boot it straight to people. You have to direct it a wee bit, you know? Bit of finesse. Now, how, do I, how could I control my goalie? You didn't tell me you, that. The, the game does the goalie. Yeah. You can bring him out if you, like like the fucking Chucky Egg bird, if you hit Y. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> if in doubt, boot it out. There it is. I have to score here. Like, this, this has already gone on too long. So here, what... what uh, it's up, 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 up. Oh, we're not allowed to talk, are we not, Jeremy? No, no not when I've got the ball. <laughs> we're not allowed to talk when you have the ball. Unbelievable. Oh, mate, See, that should be one See, you're shit now. at this, really. You're shit. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, uh... Who's that? Is that my man? Yeah. So, booze? A head axe. Hold axe and he'll hoof it, I. Well, I have so, to move it as well. Well, sort of, I... It's hard to explain all this. It's really. very hard to explain, especially when you have the ball all the time. Well, I have the ball. There we go. It's no, you're... Oh, I see. Must be. No. I don't know how I'm not winning yet, but anyway... Because you're shit at it. Because you're up against me. See here. Because I'm up against... This is unbelievable. What, um... I think I've lost myself. I want you to, I want you to tell a story, because I've been, I was telling the boys about it the other day. I would like you to tell the story... If you don't mind, when of when you were being 
what's the word? A, a dirty stop out. And <gasps> and so for a dirty stop out, my life were, wasn't allowed. And you were. <laughs> oh, that's the only reason you were. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be in that house for 11 o'clock. It was. It was <laughs> it, it, dirty stop outs may be the wrong phrase then. But I you, were, then. you were of dubious cockatry, as they would say, Sheila. I don't even know what that means. I don't want to know. You don't know what it means? Coquettish, no? Anyway. Oh, Jesus. Uh, anyway, the the story that I want you to tell, and I have my own version of it as well. Well, you have your own tale. version of quite a few stories. <laughs> I've heard you talking to Shane Todd. Is the, is the, don't mention his name on this podcast. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> is the, is the, is the, uh, the story of the guy. I oh, know. What? I oh, know. Yes. The sto- you You're know going to coming. say Coca Cola, aren't you? No. No. Oh, hey. fuck. <laughs> You've just reminded me. We'll get there. The story of the guy who, the night that you ended up with dad. Oh, God, I don't mean no. you ended up oh, with him. No. That sounded wrong. No, I didn't end up with him. I know, but the night that you, you started going with dad. No, no, I was going with dad. You were. All- Revelations. Hang on, because it'll all become clear. Well, it was kinda. You were. She, she, she was kinda going with my dad. Jim didn't know. Dad didn't know about this. <laughs> no, he didn't know. Right, okay. Told him. <laughs> Inv- invited, <laughs> invited another dude to this party, right? Now, I mean. Yeah, now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. What year we're we talking here? Sixty. Seven. Sixty-seven. Sixty-eight. But this is like these are like good, good old timey parties, like not that. Uh, these were parties when your mummy and daddy and every aunt that you ever. Now Sorry. see, you got Bohemians. me talking. I know, but that's what I do with everybody. I know. I get see, you put me off because. And then she... Bohemian score from outside the box against PSG. Unbelievable. We'll see if this happens in real life. That'll be fucking national news. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't even watch that again. I know I need to stop news doing that. And, and, and I need to stop doing that with the replays I do it every time no I know showing it's off it's a reflex because I want to now, score the where next goal why am he is he not moving there you go he's moving now I think you're doing alright I'll, I'll say this you're not as shit this as I thought you were going to be huh. anyway tell this story so you invited no I, where, where was this party it was in my friend's house and I'm not mentioning her name because you have it plastered all of it I love it I love no. it you're not mentioning her name this party happened 55 years and ago and she's still living it's, it's still and she has ears that still it's work still, it's still scandal that's what it is you're <laughs> go on so what's the crack so I, whose, whose house was it just Sarah first name Shirley it was it was her, and it was her sister <laughs> it was her sister's, her sister's birthday party right, right? and right. like at that time you invited every person you freaking knew was going to go to it right right so Just I was on invited. Or something. I I was sort of not really going with this fella. I sort of knew him. I sort of maybe kissed him a couple <gasps> of times. She didn't really. Oh, I sort of knew him. I mean, we didn't. I right, okay. <laughs> he knew what his taste buds tasted like. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and you were. And you. Uh, and anyway, you were so he like. said he was going to go to the party, right? In the meantime, right. in the meantime, I started going with your daughter, right? <laughs> Well, in the meantime, what happened was <laughs> they said, why don't we ask Jim Bartlett to go to the party? Because why? Because, because Jim, Jim plays the guitar, guitar and he's a right. fucking legend. Right. So we went down. Yes. Did oh, you hear oh, your daddy's the grandmother's to ask her, asked her, to ask her, I'm like, Frank, they asked your daddy to go to the party. <coughs> and we were standing talking to him. He said he would go. We're standing talking to him because I kind of fancied him. So, and Did, the uh, next thing, the voice comes from inside the house, Jim! Come in here and get some coal in this bag. Do you see the face? She's acting with Granny Bartlett. Now, we discussed Granny Bartlett on Shane's podcast. Uh, Don't mention his name. What? On this podcast. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> we, may, we talked about Granny Bartlett. Cassie on, uh, on Shane's thing. Nobody all, was all good I enough said, for Cassie's son. Well, all I said about her was she was sound. That's all I said. She was sound. She was but a hard nobody ticket. was good enough for her sons. She had a face like the breaking up of a hard winter, Sheila. Go ahead. No, she had a voice like the breaking uh, up of a hard winter. Her right. voice would have cut slate to be fair. Right, you, you were shit scared of her. Why well, I'm shit scared until of Until folks, until folks, she handed him two biscuits I'm one day. To and then help she was a spraying. Go. 
like the way you fucking moved back from here like I was attacking you but anyway so so the voice comes in from right the house but, and so very quick saying what, then, what did granny she needed say? a shovel of coal on the fire right so <laughs> anyway so he was, this going, was in the he was going to the party <laughs> We all arrived at the party, but by that then I had been out with your daddy a couple of times and I was... Smit. Oh, well, you were sure. I mean, who, by who wouldn't have been, know. you know what I mean? But The Glenard um, Hard, as he was known, go ahead. Uh, I just, I couldn't enjoy the party. Well, I did enjoy it, but I couldn't really enjoy it because I was afraid of your other man showing up. Which he didn't do. Well, this was, I mean, he in, fancied in, in me that ways, much. You're... He fancied me that much. He went and joined the priesthood. Well, this is what I was about. To, this is the funniest bit of this fucking story. Gets invited to this party, doesn't show up to it. Ma Bartlett ends up, you know, with my dad. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, this guy ends up joining the fucking priesthood, which I think is absolutely hilarious. And then you remember and then, you don't Oh, know. I do remember this next little bit. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no, see, well, you I, remember let me, it let so me, well. Let me, let me. Oh, go on, go on. That's your oh. net. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> That's your own net. <laughs> go on, go on. Boots it in their own net. Unbelievable. It's a score, though. Uh, you should, that's a goal. That is a goal for you. <clears throat> Not a lot of people come on. That was because you got Hold me. on, I just want to relive this glorious moment of... Go on, go on! <laughs> nice one, keeper. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, the next bit of this story for me is that... Because I believe in the loft, we found uh, a letter, a, a Christmas card, Christmas letter, from the guy who joined the priesthood a few years later. So he'd, he'd met my no. dad on the street. Isn't this right? This wasn't a few years later. This was our first Christmas. Aye, know? but like if that was in 67, this is in Where fucking 70. It's three 68. years. 68. Right, I said, I corrected it to 68. All oh, right, sorry, I didn't hear that. Um, the Tet Offensive. So, so Christmas... Anyway. Um, 1970. So Christmas 1970, Mom and Paul bought Is that my goalie there? Yeah. Yep. You know in the second half they change ways, don't you? That's so, why I, you forgot. You didn't tell me it was the second half. That's why I thought it was a me own I goal. I didn't know I had to. I didn't think I had to, Sheila. I? I was crediting you with some intelligence there. So anyway, when they, um, look at that. Look, mate, look at the expansive who have brand I got of even, who, Where's the person I'm controlling? They're same. Well, what's he I, doing? You need to make him do it. Imagine, imagine that the game was just it doing it, and you weren't there, anyway. I saved that one. Oh, I was super, shit. super, super safe. I um, won't tell them the rest of the so, story. So, a uh, story that I know is that this guy bumped into Dad on the street, and this is from a card from this guy that I discovered, like what twenty fifteen or something like this. Aye, no. no, no. Are you sure you're Here's not a wee chance for you. Oh, think you're, strike. It would have been after that he died, was it not? Was it? I, th I, I thought it was before. Anyway. Because if you found that he'd have laughed his leg off it, you know, well, when anyway, he remembered it. So Basically, my dad totally emasculated this guy because by 1970, at Christmas, the, uh, Ma and Paul Bartlett were married and Ma was up a duff for Fiona, right? So Can you not say that in a nicer way than up the duff? You were with child. You oh, had you had a Fiona shaped bun in the oven, right? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so uh, and you'd have been about six or seven months pregnant mm -hmm. at this stage, right? So uh, this guy met me down the street. He's on his way to fully being a priest, and then sends what can only be described as a think you know remember me when you come into your kingdom letter <laughs> being like do you remember that time i kissed you sheila and it was like <laughs> he, he, didn't, he, liar. Didn't, he didn't say that i went that, over to everybody he did, and think he did he didn't verbalize that but that's what the cards <laughs> basically said happy told your father how lucky he was happy and Christmas, did he sheila. know what yes he i met did. you on the i met jim on the street I hear you're up a duff with he your He did Fiona. not say that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, oh, Jim's a very lucky man. I'm not. I'm in the fucking seminary now. <laughs> well, it was his choice. It was his, his choice. His choice. He walked away from 
this wonderful person. Unbelievable. Well, he walked away or he was he was marginalized. He was emasculated. <laughs> anyway, moving on to your one of your other conquests. Ta- let's tell us about tell me about this uh this cherry coke. Oh, and I've just it remembered. It wasn't cherry coke. I've just remembered. Such a thing as cherry coke. I've, I don't know anything. Oh my god! Think. There was no such thing as cherry. In coke. 1966, <laughs> we were lucky we had coke. And and I mean Coca Cola. I, I know. Yeah, I was going to say. Not that coke. <laughs> I know. Where, uh, where is everybody? <laughs> Unbelievable! Look at that! Look! Oh, I got a score. Do you know what? Fuck! I'm gonna score. I would I'm, I'm roar if I'd have gone in. I'm gonna score with my keeper. Fuck you! See if you do now. That's dirty. It's dirty. <laughs> One keeps. Where is my mom? <laughs> don't don't say say it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so. so Tell us All about that this. rolling, exhausting yourself. I, 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 I know that's exactly why I stopped playing football. So, <laughs> oh fuck me, your keeper's having the game of his life. Um, well, I'm not controlling it, is I was it? gonna say, yeah, I you know he'd be standing on his own. Fuck, he'd be away somewhere. He'd be away looking for fucking cherry bay at some dance. Anyway, so right, go on. This tell is us an all, This is. Well, this is I great. Suppose, and I suppose it is a good story. It's but a fucking great story. I think these stories are my favourite thing But see, thing what you this. have to do is you have to put yourself back in the 1966, <laughs> which is impossible, right? Well, no, but what I love about these stories is <laughs> when you say shit like, don't, they're still alive. <laughs> I'm like... Uh, our, my sister, our Mary, wanted me to go to the dance with her. I didn't want to go. Right. So she insisted, and then and if you don't go, I'll not get going. So where was this dance? In St Teresa's. Right on the Glen Road. On the Glen Road, right. That's a fucking I, a hotbed of villainy. I was crime, only sixteen, right? right? And, and not like a sixteen-year-old now, like you know that are used to being out and about and they know everything. We know nothing, right? So I go to this dance, <laughs> and this guy. Asks me, can he walk me home? And I didn't know how to say no. I didn't want to go walk home. Then he was brutal, but anyway. Describe his brutality. How was he? Well, well let's say this: when your daddy, when I started going with your daddy, and I told him this story, right? <laughs> this guy went to St Mary's, and so did your daddy, <laughs> and they had a book called The Sumerian. Sorry, I just need to say this: Victory to Twank with Bohemians. We don't need to play any more FIFA now. Good, let's thank just talk God. shit. But that was only because it was an own goal, because really all you beat me was 1-0. Well, it was just a mistake because I didn't know it was half time. McCaber did also skin right. through and nearly score, but anyway, go ahead. Right, this guy, anyway. So he asked me, could he walk me home? And I let him walk me home. And we turned in from the Glen Road into where the street beside where we lived was. He said to me, come on round to the garages. You know what that means. I knew what it meant, but I did like, you know, I went, what? And I started to run. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Come on, man, the sh- charges. And he screamed Romance. after, and he screamed after me. <laughs> I bought you a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, boy, so boy. the end of the story is that Toxic I was masculinity. You, the Sumerian magazine had a picture every year it came out a picture of every kid in the school, just right. a wee thumbnail thing. So of course your daddy went to St Mary's too and the old Sumerian was in his house and I got it and I showed him this guy and he nearly died laugh. Why what was up on? Well he was about seventeen and he was balding. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably stressed out by we girls' cokes and we couldn't even get them around the fucking skilled. garages. But that, that's my big romances. Two of them. I and have Mary another. Jim. No, I know another one. No, you don't. You I know, because do. you don't. Because oh god, I you do. <laughs> <laughs> I know another one. But now I'm not mentioning that guy's name because he freaking still is. Right, and well, there's no way. You don't have to mention his name, but you can mention the name of his favorite recording artist. Tell a story. Come on, come on go, to this podcast I go, and I did, go, I did go out with this guy now. I did. I love it. And... <laughs> it, was ter- it was terrible. It was awful. Like, I, I, I went out with him. I, didn't, I knew I didn't really like the guy. He was nice enough, but he wasn't for me, right? But... 
<laughs> yeah, the collection of my Orbison records. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a Roy Orbison fan, but I really was. So I went to her, who, like, she's a, will not say what I think of her, but she was a, she was a solid band. I went, she was a, I'm going to stop myself, right? So I goes to her and I says, how do I get rid of this guy? And she went, don't get rid of him yet. Borrow another record. She would got me borrowing records off him that she learned the songs. Then give him that back, get another LP, right? Don't get rid of him yet. When you want to get rid of him, I'll tell you how to do it, right? So this night, not too many weeks later, he so, tells me. <laughs> weeks, weeks later this, after so, like, I want to get rid of this, this guy. Couldn't, this couldn't have gone on like very long, maybe a couple of months I only went with him, mate. It's too long. And he he told me he loved me, right? I didn't know what to say at seventeen. I told him I loved him. In the background. <laughs> I told him I loved him the next night. <laughs> I told him I loved him. Yeah, and then the fair, know, right? so and the then the very next, next night, our Mary said, "Just tell him you just don't want to get into anything serious and just drop him, right?" So I did, and he said, "This was awful." He sat in my mummy's hall and cried as I said, "You told me you loved me." <laughs> what is we? Sixteen, seventeen. <laughs> Uh, but not like a 17 year old I don't know what the hell to do our Mary our Mary was like you know, she went well like anything that moved but I won't tell you what I think of her <laughs> unbelievable that is fucking hilarious our Mary was 15 and she when we moved to that house and they were still built in the houses and she was going out with the freaking guy that was the dumper driver man the dumper driver man <laughs> Old-timey jobs that don't exist anymore. Um, I bet you there's still people that don't drive a dumper. <laughs> I'm sure there are, but the dumper driver, man, you don't usually see that on Indeed.com, you know what I mean? Or fucking NI Job Finder, dumper driver, man, wanted. Must be able to dump drives. <laughs> must, be I mean? able, must be able to drive. Yeah. Driving would be... A dry, clean driving licence would be an advantage. That's fucking... Unbelievable. So I'm, I'm sorry, there is, there, sorry no, there, there is there's one more no, there, there's there one more be. there's one more partial romance. There is not. Jerry Adams, tell a story. Do oh it. my god. Oh, that was See awful. look there is there's all no, the stories. This is not a romance. If you know This is not a romance. Right. I sang at weddings. In the church, obviously, not out in the street, and at funerals. <laughs> Imagine, <at night. laughs> you were just outside the church, just singing, singing to yourself, in. right? Singing all the Roy Orbison songs you learned. So, <laughs> this this girl and uh, uh, girl and you, her brother was ordained was a priest. <laughs> no, definitely not. Her brother had just been ordained a priest and he was saying his first mass in Clonard. Now, he wasn't a redemptorist. He was, <laughs> as Granny Barton would have said, no he's a prods, wee circular priest. Any, any prods watching this? Granny Barton. When you, when you just said, like... There's people now, on, he wasn't a redemptorist. They're going, what? Well, there's people on the Shankill Road who do unity Listen, pilgrims right. so they do you, know what a redemptorist is right you, you, I'll say this unity pilgrims sounds like an amazing rap act but go ahead well so this guy was saying his first mass but the point I'm trying explain to explain that though granny Bartlett that's an event that for super tags saying your first mass is like taking your first e-tab right go ahead it is or going to your first party with two guys or no, sorry, that's not right. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> it's like your first Tarantino. This girl asked me, would I sing at his mass? The mass he was saying. So off I go. What were you singing? Hymns. That was a good, that was a good answer. I wanted you to bring not one, one Roy, no. well, Not one Roy Orbison song that not I right, sing okay. in the chapel, right? So afterwards we're having a wee tea and a wee dance in Clonard Hall. You have to go down to it. Your daddy was with me. We had left our Fiona Ireland because we were going on our holidays the next morning. So she has a story to tell about that. She was my right and I was there. Right, so. Jerry Adams was a friend of this priest when they were children. So, of course, he was at the Mass. 
And he came over and he asked, no, not the priest, Jerry Adams came over and asked me to dance. Jesus, the power left my legs. Understood God, he went, oh, Jesus. He has a way of making the power leave people's legs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't want to. But I, I was afraid not to, right? Mm. And he went, he went to all. Was he already, about, like, was he already famous at this stage? Infamous. He was more than famous. <laughs> he was infamous, in right? Yeah. He, I, I was terrified to say no. Because I did, even though my legs were like jelly, as you said, they were, they were the only two legs I had. Did you do, the, cr- did you do the crazy legs like, dance? Mm-hmm. No. Um, and then he started telling me about the beautiful singer I was, and he, how much he really enjoyed. Oh my God, I didn't hear another word. I was, oh, it was awful. Did he tell you about that 32 county <laughs> socialist Irish republic? No, he, he said, he, I, he's, no, he just said to me, do you do sums? 26 plus six. <laughs> Makes one. <laughs> Good times. No. Good times. That's so funny. So now I've told you all the romances. All your romances. So it's time for the Biscuit World Cup. Ma Barlett has brought biscuits. Is this a double? Is this a double header of the Biscuit World Cup? Can you eat four biscuits? I'm not eating. A sh- I'm not eating shortbread. You'll have a bite though. Okay. Yeah. How else are you meant to judge it? Like? So the ones I wanted to do were was. All butter shortbread, the driest biscuit ever made. Tesco's finest, no. Just, Te- just, they didn't even buy finest these ones. These are shite, like, but you'll enjoy them. And then McVitie's ginger nuts. Well, now, if you're going to buy ginger nuts. McVitie, McVitie's are... Has that anything to do with Manscaped? That's all I'm asking. <laughs> it does if you're Darren Matthews. Um, <laughs> he has ginger nuts, do not So... I was really asking. I oh, know, so here, there's a... Well, here, no, I'll, I'll, I'll offer there's you the packet. There's a broken one, thanks very I'll much. Tell you, no, I'll have you're, the broken one. You're a gentleman. One. Now, now, what, what we're going to do, do? Eat it. Or at least eat a bit of it, taste it. And then we'll mark it out of ten. These are sweeter than the Tesco ginger nuts. They're a bit sweet, aren't they? They're not as gingery as they used to be. I think this is a thing with biscuits. I think whatever it is about that biscuit... It used to be more like that biscuit. Do you know what I mean? So like, hobnobs used to be knobbier, and fucking ginger nuts used to be more gingery. And like, don't even fucking start my own toffee pops. I'm I'm not over that. Well, Sheila and I discussed this yesterday, <laughs> and she said the best biscuit ever, and I have to agree with her. You can't get them anymore with gypsy creams. Weren't for me. They're called traveler creams now. What are they called? I'm joking. We'll probably have to cut that as well, but anyway, um, no. Do you think that's why they took that name? Is that why they stopped making them? Because it wasn't PC enough. See how PC I've Uh, been today. It it might well. Have I been PC today? She's been PC today. We've only had to cut one suicide joke, so. It wasn't a joke. I God. So, out of ten, I'm saying that's like a five. I'm saying it's a four because it's not even in my memory what a ginger snap should taste like. This is going to be awful. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this looks like a fucking lentil you would find on a building site. Look at that. Don't it? That looks like something Probably you'd put above. Probably tastes like a lentil you'd find on a building site as well. Looks like something you'd put above a fucking bad door. Can we with. just half that? Aye. Don't waste them because like, well, I would hang like on, to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish I would the like to know what William thinks of those dry freaking biscuits and you're going to hand me a whole one. I know of all new biscuits for lemons. <laughs> Have you, honestly? Mate, I go into Tesco every couple of weeks in there and make a fool of myself. I, I've bought 10 packets of different biscuits in there. 10? Because we're doing five fucking episodes. You made a fool of yourself one other day when you hid in the cupboard and duns on me. So you didn't think I was going to tell that I didn't think she was going to bring that up. To be fair, I was 27. But, um, <laughs> hang on. Me running around duns asking people and this man goes to me, has he a wee blue hat on him? 27. There's right. another there's another story about you well, down at the Royal Hospital. What? Well. Right. Our Fiona stood on a tin one day, a tin lid. She had opened a tin of tuna and threw it into a bag instead of throwing it in the bin and then she stood on it and cut her foot. And then tuna she me. Go ahead. She needed to get to the hospital. Right. What did I do? What could I do? What could you do? I, Daddy was at work. Could I leave all yous in the house? No, I had to take all yous with me. Down to the hospital. Down to the hospital. Eight, kids. eight of us. Go ahead. Right. Eight of us and me. Right. What were you driving? The minibus? The minibus. See? Fucking true story. Go ahead. 
the B team big blue fondos. So we goes in to the hospital and there was a a guy who was obviously an alcoholic and you don't have to cut that out because the guy was drunk, right? Sliding down the walls, right? But he had fallen or he had been in a fight, the blood's running out of him. There's a woman sitting beside me, tutting at him, right, tutting. It's ridiculous. Like as if he's not allowed in there, right? So I'm trying to make you talk. You've you. never tutted at an alcoholic <coughs> in the any ever? Go ahead. If I do a tut under my breath, nobody hears it. <laughs> so I'm trying. <coughs> the man kept looking over and I sort of acknowledged that he was there by smiling at him, not doing anything else, right? Not being very PC, you know. Did you ask him to dance? No, I didn't ask him to dance and I didn't ask him to a party, right? right? So. so he's sitting there. And I'm saying to our ones, don't be staring at the man. Now, she is tutting. Ma Bartlett has a way of telling you things like this so that everyone, including the guy, definitely sees it, right? She becomes quite stiff like a board when she's trying to be subtle. She would definitely die if she was a spy. You definitely go like this. You do this, like, you don't really All go right, to restaurants. All right, I do it in a you, restaurant when I want to she, hear what people are she, saying. When she yes. wants to know what's happening four tables away, you'll just see her going... <laughs> You ready to order? What is it? What? There's another story. There's a divorce happening three tables away. <laughs> right? So, so you know, you know she's gone like this. Don't look at him. <laughs> don't, and some, one of our ones, I probably wasn't old enough to talk. The ones that are old enough to talk will be going, don't look at him, mommy. And she'd be going, do not look at him. Anyway, go ahead. So, don't look so at this guy. So every, the rest of the children, Behaved themselves and didn't Shoulder. look. Twanky sits. <laughs> right? What age was I seriously though? Well, two? that's you had no, you weren't even two. You had your white suit on, your white your A white, white snow suit. suit. <laughs> and your blue up with your big blue pom pom on it, right? And <laughs> he turned he Is looks there over. any wonder I've ended up like this, go ahead. <laughs> he looked over at you and he goes, What are you looking at, rubber head? <laughs> 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 There's one. So tell the Don story then. The Don story was you vanished, same same hat on, and you just vanished. Now it was in Don's when in the park. It center. was all counters, mm. right? Not that you walked in. There was rails of clothes. You had to go to a counter, and like that, you just vanished. And I'm running around Don's, nearly out of my mind. And this man goes to me. Excuse me, has he a blue hat on? And I went, yes, he says he's in that cupboard onto that counter. <laughs> and Good so he times. was, he thought it was funny. He was sitting with a smile on his face when I opened the cupboard ready to kill I you. I was doing the smile that a cat called Tyson gave me one day whenever in my old apartment when I, Tyson knew that I was allergic to him and he would sit on top of the bins. He's a wee dick. I could tell him a cat story too. He used to sit on top of the bins and he'd go like this. He would look at me because he knew I wouldn't go near him. He'd go like that. Oh, sweet mother. He's a wee dick. Anyway, I hope he's fucking dead. I hope Kurt Zuma's booting him through a kitchen somewhere. Anyway. I hate... Sorry. I loathe cats. What they're is this cat slick it. They look on them. They slick it, right? This... I'm not an animal lover, but now I wouldn't boot them. Right? No, no, no. Can I just ask, is this, because if it isn't, I'd love it. The cat story. This is Tabitha. Right, okay, no, it's not. But I, I want... It ca- probably sorry. is the same Can we story. finish this biscuit a wee second or just Sweet try it? Jesus, it... It's like eating sawdust. It's horrible. <laughs> it's not good shortbread. Like... It's horrible. I mean, to be fair, All I butter. Don't think it was 35p. <laughs> All butter. They must have just passed the butter. They must have rubbed butter on the paper so it wouldn't stick. It's all white cap, like it's not good, like is it? They don't even make white cap, so that shows you how old they are. It's fucking stupid. If they used white cap in them, right? So, here, out of ten, though, that's one. like a three. That's a one. I mean, avoid at all costs. That's what that is. Ginger nuts go through, but I mean, you can put ginger nuts through, but they're not ginger. As ginger nuts used to be. They're I not. Yet these, mm. but so I don't know why. Jammy them, Dodgers. I, I don't like Jammy Dodgers. Individually wrapped. Oh, God. Let's do. Is there two in our packet? I think there might be four. There's oh. four. Look at that. What's this? What's this? 
That's to fill the hole in. Don't give Kevin one of those. Just he has a hole in his back too. Uh, he'll lose look it. at the fucking... What's that, though? Fuck up. Who makes these? Look, they're for children to put into no, their lunch. No. Hold on. They are made by the people who made Jammy Dodgers or the King Burtons. They're made by the people who make Jammy Dodgers. Well, you said who makes them. That's a, uh, but oh, you no, well, I know the well, people I mean, who Tesco's make Jammy Dodgers. Well, I mean, Tesco's couldn't make them, them and call them Jammy Dodgers. A, They'd have to call them that's like going, oh, Jolly I, Rogers or something. <laughs> That's how, see, that, that sort of creative thinking gets you into the fucking caterpillar cake court case. There's a, there, uh, there was a fucking court case okay. about that cake, what? but Boris Johnson remains prime minister anyway. Let's do, right? I'm saying this by the look of that. They're dodging the jam. They're not really fucking putting them in. Well, I'll open mine and see how much jam's in them, but are they're, they're glued together. Mate, I've done better hackles in that jam. That's fucking unbelievable. Hang on. Awful. They're not going in at all. They're not. We will give them one because the... That's like... They were really nine pay for a packet. Do you know what that... That's like smelling your own breath when, when you're sick. Well, like, I've never done that. I'm not a contortionist. I don't mean like... I'm not even fucking in on that. They're, they're fucking leaping. I'd, I'll say it, that's a fucking zero. Fuck you, Dodgers. They're awful. I feel like these are going to be... If you had a house through. full of children and you had to make lunches for them, it would do. A house full of... It'll do. There's, there's, there's fucking parenting 101. It'll do. Get that in them. Fuck their teeth. The jammy Dodgers will fill their teeth. Here. I had another story to tell you that I, know, I said so I would Tabitha, take. I know I haven't here. Oh, Tabitha. It's all in here. Oh, just, I want to get through These will win. They... I could eat human shit right now and it would go through ahead of the jammy torture. Unbelievable. Thank God I'm out of here. Poor William. Does anybody want, a, 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 get. anybody want a Bourneville finger? Kev okay, wants one past him. Here's a a Bourneville finger. They're nice. <laughs> Just thought of something. A Bourneville finger. <laughs> Sounds like something you would get if you're scratching your hole and it goes through the cloth. <laughs> There's me sitting telling stories about you sitting in a white suit and a blue hat and you come out with that. Imagine I told that. Imagine I said the Bourneville joke, sitting in a white suit and a blue hat. <laughs> You don't have to try and find a fucking snowsuit in triple XL. Here we go. Right. I'll say this. That beats the balls of a normal Cadbury's oh, less yeah. finger That's, is, doesn't okay. it? Okay. So is that good? What are you giving it? I'll, um, I'm going to be taking them home. They're on real. Oh, yeah. oh. That's like a fucking seven. Right, fellas, you're on your own. You're getting so one. And these two are on fingers home. and ginger nuts go through. Right. Anyway, Tabitha, let's do it. As I said, I don't like cats. I don't like I don't like dogs. Some dogs, like we dash, take yeah. dash. Dash is the dog that I dash rescued and gave away within seven hours. <clears throat> we've we've, we've done that story. He's still in the family, so I like dash. Kevin had Hazzy. I could have taken Hazzy, except I could. God help me, it was too big to be in an apartment. Fuck Hazzy, go ahead. Right, so he's on a farm him. now and he's happy, <clears throat> right? He legitimately is on a farm. Like, and it's now called Kevin. Not, I, I know, how weird. They called him after our Kevin because he gave them the dog. Imagine, imagine. imagine calling a dog Kevin, but also ima imagine how confusing it must be. To the dog. And how traumatic it must be to the dog to be, you well, know. Well, that's why you're traumatised because people are just shouting I called the name you Kieran, of his previous owner. I called you Kieran Malachy Jared and everybody called you Twanky. It must confuse you. Exactly. Everybody, everybody calls me that. Calls you Ke everybody, everybody calls me that. And it was never, ever made up in the family. It was, it was friends Tesco, of yours. It was Tesco's. So Good times. The cat story is the girl, the family who lived next door to Granny Bartlett in Ardoin had a cat and the cat had kittens. We were over visiting Granny and the girl came out to show our children the kittens. And then she said, asked your mommy, she's trying to get rid of them, asked your mommy, can you have a kitten and I'll give you it. And I'm shouting out, no Colette, 
thank you, they're not getting a kitten. <laughs> oh, but isn't it lovely? So she goes on and on, they're all standing with their wee faces going, Mommy, please, please, please. Okay, I give in. The cat came home. I hated it. <laughs> I'm just looking at that. That would have done wonderfully for it. That tea chest over there. Uh -huh. So it starts tripping about the house. Now, I said to your daddy, if you're bringing that home, you're looking after it. I am having nothing to do with it. Yes, Shana. Even off hurry, we shouts to I be am, picking exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. No. Did it, so he was going out to work every morning. So now here's my confession, and God forgive me. I'm fucking terrified because I don't know this story. Go oh, ahead. do you not? No? The God forgive me for what I did. We didn't get fucking cat pie that night, did we? No. I had a beer, got a beer box. Now I mean a wooden crate. Crate. And when Daddy went out to work, I turned the crate upside down <coughs> on top of the cat. False imprisonment. Because I was terrified of it. I mean, I hated it. I didn't like it. I was scared. That of it. probably put right. the cat in a good mood, though. So it was probably at so its best when you lifted the crate off it. My father, my daddy came up one day to visit, and he hears this. And he went, what is that? And he says, it's that cat. And he went, where is it? Onto that box. God forgive you, he says, you'll drive that cat mad. Kurt Zuma, my mother, go ahead. I'll take the cat. Will you get rid of it, daddy? Yes, I'll get rid of it. I'm picturing Dolly's going to take it. Cat pie around the curries. No, I'm ahead. picturing Dolly's going to drown it. Daddy's going to take it up the mountain. We might have to edit this as well. Daddy's going to take it up the mountain. This was go. back in the days when you could just drown cats. Nobody gave a shit. Go ahead. They did it. You know and I know. Oh, that the Seamus Well, he kept farm Seamus yes. Heaney drowned. If it's good enough, if it's good enough, good enough for Seamus Heaney, it was good enough for me, right? The early purges, yeah. So, I goes down to my mummy's the next week for my visit. I, oh, by the way, we called the cat. When it was in our house, we called it Tabitha. Right after the wee girl and be witched. Tabitha. Yeah. I goes down and I sees this freaking cat walking up and down. And I goes, did you not get rid of that? And he goes, who's Zenda? As in the present. <laughs> The prisoner of Zenda. That's why oh I called God. it Zenda, right? Unbelievable. That's a great so, name for right. it. Absolutely. You promised me you'd get rid of her. Well, I got rid of her out of your house, but she's staying here. All went very swimmingly until I knew I had driven the cat mad, right? My mother, Granny Curry, had really bad arthritis. She couldn't really get out of a chair without help. So she's sitting in her wee chair one the day. The claw shank redemption. Go Daddy, ahead, sorry. Daddy is out getting messages. Gemma's budgie gets out of the cage. Tabitha jumps up on top of the settee and is sitting. And Mummy's shouting, Don't you dare touch that bird to the cat as if the cat's going to turn around Don't and say, Aye, Sheila, no. I'm listening to you, right? The next thing she makes a swipe for the bird. Daddy comes in. Mommy's sitting in floods of tears. Get rid of that cat. That cat is mad. And did I get the fucking budgie? Oh, I'd killed the budgie. And then Daddy said, now Daddy said, he took it to the cat rescue place. But he's dead. I couldn't it's tell a, you where it's he took it. It's a very watery But it uh, might have story. been, it yeah. could have been a Seamus Heaney. Lying in the cat, cat rescue. Uh, there's a cat rescue place called Bucket of Water up on... Um, Top of the Town Hill. I actually, this is unbelievable. There's literally, there are, there are swathes of the human race who spend their time on the internet looking for people who have been cruel to cats to kill them. And I you, wasn't, cru I wasn't cruel to it. I and, was afraid of it. And you have come on <laughs> the internet and gone, I fucked with cats. Um, I, there's I was literally afraid a documentary of the series I mean, called Don't minute? Fuck with well, Cats. Well, where do we minute? it? Where do we win it? Under the box was a saucer of milk for her. Right? And there was two well, holes I mean, in the, the side of it you could breathe. In the Shawshank Redemption, they feed them when they're in the hole. It's probably still shit. Well, I don't think I was crazy. Like, I'm picturing you as the warden from Shawshank Redemption the... going over to a cat and going, nothing stops. You know what I mean? I There's a whole lot of things I could have done there. I could have let it out and just it would have run away because it was probably as afraid of me as I was afraid of it. 
And then they would have come in crying. I just said, I couldn't look after her. Granda took him down to her house. So they still saw it when they were down to Granda's. Until they didn't. <clears throat> until they didn't, until she had to go. Until she had a wee fucking, <clears throat> a wee budgie lunch meal. And then but that was to... my daddy calling it Zenda. Sorry, speaking of cats in our family. You know. Don't talk about our roaching like that. <laughs> yeah, very good. No, uh, there's another cat whose name began with Zed. Who met a sticky end? Sarah. Please tell that story. The fucking cat that, that was buried. Oh God, our Brenda. Right, so my mum's sister. Aye. Right. She had a cat. Can I? I, I I'll you get tell you the story because she had I would have to say what. Right, she had a cat. This cat. Like she's a real cat lover. She she loves she loves. She this lets cat. her cat. This is funny as well because the cat eat is also things a off her for... plate when she's eating her dinner. I'm sorry. Right. Well, fair and enough. This has its own this has its own chair. Well, that that's the chair in the house. This is the spectrum of cat that's love in in right? our family. It ranges from let it eat your let it eat your dinner to get under that fucking crate. Right. It's okay. There's milk under it. It still wasn't get in under that crate there's milk in it you're lucky you're not you weren't under a crate I, I, th- I, I was put into that cupboard with a saucer of milk and duns that time and <laughs> anyway this fucking cat lived better than my auntie Brenda was living right she, like cats getting fucking fed fillet steak auntie Brenda's eating salmon out of a can right so anyway uh she loved this fucking cat. The cat went missing. You, I, I'll tell the story. You stop me if I get it wrong, right? right? It didn't go missing. She was going out. She, the cat, she lives out in the country. Right. So she would let the cat out and the During cat the would run about all day. Right, so, so cat's she was going about. out to work. Okay. And she sees the cat land dead in the road. Oh, right. Okay. Go from her then. Because I, I, she I, sees right. the cat land dead in the road. She goes up in a blue light. She can't go into work. It's a big ginger cat. She was, I don't care what colour. And was. I don't know what colour it was. I think it was. Nor would it occur. But the thing, she broke her heart about it, right? And I know there's people love them and they're like members of their family and that's fine. I just don't feel like that. Right. Well, we know how you feel, Warden. Go ahead. So. You eat when we see you eat. Sorry. Go ahead. You piss when we see you piss. Go ahead. Well, well, yeah, well, that's why it was under the box because it didn't. It just it pissed wherever it wanted. So anyway, she goes to the man next door to her, not the guy she married, and cries and wails and goes on. And he went, don't worry about it, Brenda. I'll bury it. So he gets a black plastic bag. He puts the cat's remains in it. He digs a hole. He buries the cat. <clears throat> she is in bits. She couldn't go into work. She had to ring the office. Can't come in. The cat's dead. Fine. I'll come in in the afternoon. Off she goes to work in the afternoon, right? She comes home that night and the girl that lived on the other side of her calls her in and goes, Brenda, and she goes, I've got a gift for you. And she's saying to herself, please don't let it be another kitten. Let me get over losing Zara. And she goes in. This is, this is fucking high drama here on the glasses. And Zara go is sitting on her sofa. Zara the cat is alive. buried was not Zara. So they've buried some random fucking cat. That they thought until the door knocked that night. And this lady We've all been there. I've done that with said, people. What? This woman said. Sean, your I, dad's alive. <laughs> He's sitting here. Well, who do we bury in the middle of nowhere? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so she said, this woman comes to the door and said, I believe you buried my cat today. Brenda Someone, yes. sorry, some mad bitch arrives at the door going, you buried my cat, right? Go ahead. No, this wasn't the mad bit. This is this Brenda is said, mental. yes, I thought it was my cat and this man buried it for me and blah, blah, blah. I'll show you where it's buried. This is you the mad bit. You will not. Show me where it's buried. Sorry. You will dig it up. You will dig it up. I will bury it myself. I will bury it myself. 
That's mad. That is a now, handbrake. And then, Sorry, do you know what that is? That's in a stolen car, handbrake in, in the parties, burn. That is what that is. That is fucking mental. Well, I think there was That's quite ha- a few mental is, people in that, that story. Is, that is handbrake in, in the psychiatry office. Uh, now, wh- be wh- careful because you have things getting edited out of what I said. What I'm saying is fucking dead on. This, is, is. About, this is about You're a fucking... You're talking about a nutcase. It's, it's, it is a fucking nutcase. You uh my you buried my cat today. Yes, I thought it was my cat. Dig it up. This is the more mental bit. She fucking dug it up. I would go, it's in that field. Have at it, you mad cunt, right? I would oh! just say it. I've dropped the C bomb. That's how Right that's in how, front of me, that's you how said mental that. the story is. I'm not allowed to watch some of your podcasts because of that. I know, words. but I had to say it. I I would, is, I so is, you wait till you get me and cap just call That Alice. is a perfect application of that phrase. How, how uh, I mean. I'm disgusted. What, uh, what, uh, you're disgusted at me? Somebody said to someone else, dig up a dead cat so I can bury it. As if, like, it needs, like, so I can. It was actually a Buddhist cat and I want to bury it my way. Like, that's fucking mental. A bit of an Buddhist cat that did the right thing it was buried on the dead day. It's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Like, that is... I'm sorry to drop the bomb in front of you, but that is uh, so absolutely like a- mad. Uh, like, uh, I actually... All I want it. to say is to the peasants that watch this. <laughs> right? Yes. Because when we used to do the podcast in our house oh, no, you on a wee thing... That. That's what I used to say. I know, to the it's, it's gone Good morning, from peasants, me. right? But they all know who they are. The Zoom recorder, yeah. They all know who the peasants are. But if they've sat here, sat and watched this podcast, then they know why we're all nuts in our family. What, because, because, because of the cat? I'm nuts and I rare Jews. Well, and true. I came from a crowd of nuts, yeah. right? A wee bag but, of KP, that's where you're from. That's yeah. it. But, but, you know, we got you with your wee ah. blue hat and your white boots and your white snowsuit. It's your favourite great aunt. And I've turned out fine. Don't even fucking bring her up. My great aunt. (laughs) Or dig her up. She wasn't great. Don't dig her up. This is the, I know. Yeah, dig dig her up so I can burn her, make sure she's dead. No, I. This is the aunt who bought me a paperweight for my communion. Fuck off. Give me a fiver. Do you know what she used to do? Do you remember this? She used to tape money to the inside of your card. I pound coins. I pound coin or fuck it. I swear to God, she did five twenty p's on one of mine. A pound, so I was getting a pound for my birthday. Not only that, she was your godmother. She was my godmother. She was a dick. She was a dick. Absolutely. Anyway, <laughs> uh, before before we wrap up, do I have any any pertinent questions? I should check and see oh, did anybody sure have, have anything to ask you. Like, um, fuck's sake! Here we go. Here we go. I can't believe how PC I've been this morning. I was PC I, I, up until that cat story fucking drives me insane any time. Well, you were the one brought it up. I know. You, I mean, wasn't going to tell the story of Zara. Uh, people saying, can you not tell us who wins at the start of the podcast? Sorry for the spoilers. Um, who wins what? The, pod, <clears throat> the Who wins the game? Now, they don't know that you're on this yet. Um... Jesus, these questions are fucking rare. There's one here I can ask you. There's two I should ask you. So, um, fuck with loads of questions. Um, there's two I'm definitely gonna ask you. Who the fuck asked this? I, I, I'm not answering this. How would you solve the fuel poverty issues we are currently facing? Get sell your the, car. Sell your car. <laughs> Or as I would say, get in the fucking lagging and leave me alone anyway. What's up? This is a comedy podcast, will you fuck up? Anyway, how would you solve the fucking poverty well, crisis? Well, comedy prodca- po- podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next episode is when Willie's on. Um, how- Sorry, right, so there's no, a couple here. No, I can answer that question. What would be? No, fuck that question. Yes, no, 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 because there's a comedian who could solve that question. Who? He's a number 10. Oh, very good. See? Ask him how to solve very, it. Very droll, Sheila. Very droll. Anyway. Why am I sitting here with two half biscuits? A man that were stinking here. Get rid of those, please. Because you didn't fucking finish them, that's why. No, because they were stinking. 
Get rid of those. What would be your last meal on death row? Someone who's written this and then wrote this well, is for Matt Neal. All... Hang on, hang on. Will you let me fucking finish? Well, yes. What would be your last meal if on death row? Question mark. No limits. I. <laughs> well, there is a limit because like. You can't eat something that's going to take you a day to eat it because you're going to be fucking dead. Well, I, see, I would say that. I would ask them for a steak, a 30-day... 30-day aged, aged, aged steak. 30-day aged steak, starting from today, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, what would be your, your death row meal? Well, first of all, I would never be on death row because, <laughs> because I am a law-abiding citizen. Law-abiding citizen who tortures right. cats. Go ahead. Um, but that, that was in the days when you were allowed to torture cats. <laughs> Nobody would have thought anything. I, I don't know why you should think that's an awful story. I was terrified of the bloody thing. First of all, I wouldn't be on death row, right? Right, but if you were, it's a hypothetical. So it'll have to I be know, a it's hypothetical, hypothetical meal. It's hypothetical for me as well. I'm so not on death row. Hypothetical meal, on a hypothetical. So I'll say something that I would never eat, right? So I'll start it off with oysters. Oh my bulk, god! Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> She wants to make herself sick before she dies. Go ahead. I mean, actually, it's not a bad shout because see, see, if you, see if you see if if you had oysters and then like a really really hot curry and they were sticking you in the electric chair, more mess for them. Do you know what I mean? I why, why, do you, why do you want oysters? Chair. Why did I think electric want... chair? I wasn't thinking electric chair. I, I'm thinking hanging. <laughs> I wasn't thinking hanging. I was thinking, you know, drinking hemlock. Is there anything that, like anything more old than this? I was thinking of hanging. Well, yeah, oysters would be a good one. You're gonna fucking bulk them up on yourself, aren't you? Why do you want oysters? You'd have to say fuck the cleaners. Don't put why. that rope out. There's something stuck in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I was actually on death row, it would be it would be hard to beat. To be fair. Chicken Philip burger, everything, no tomato, chips, carton of, curry, carton of curry sauce, a raffos, yeah. I tell no, people, I'm not I tell even, people I'm not I know even this, answering that question. I tell because... people I know this great wee Greek place in Andy Town, it's called Raffos. What was Sincerely. the second question? Oh, the most overrated and most underrated counties in Ireland. We've been to most of them. We've been to the most I would say under, we've been the, oh, the we have been to the worst one. What is it? I think I know what it is. What was said together? Leitrim. Shite. Shite. That's the worst, me and worst Kev, place. Me and Kev did a gig in a bar in it. And we thought it would be good crack to play the Christy Moore song. Leitrim, or Ballon Amour as it's known. And uh, it's about how Leitrim's basically full of raw heads. Went down awfully. They hated it. Oh! Um, it went, wrong. it went down yes. awfully. That's another county. Well played. Uh, put a leash on that. <laughs> so, um, Over- I think Le- Leitrim, Leitrim is the worst county. Is, is overrated, and it's the worst county, but overrated in the sense that it's even at county status. Yeah, it's and a the, there's shithole. a song, not the song you're talking about. There is a song that probably nobody else has the record. Only we had it because. When the guy made it, he used the the backing thing was the choir out of CBS on the Glen Road, right? And it's called Lovely Leitrim. Now that's a lie for a start. A, a backing track made by the CBS choir. I wonder. No, no, it was a record. You could buy the record. No, no, but I'm saying, I'm saying the CBS choir now. No, I'm talking about CBS the 60s. Even, I don't know, but CBS isn't even its own thing well, anymore. No, so it's not called CBS. But if there, the if, there was a, there. if there was a choir, they'd all be like apprentice car thieves. But anyway, so... The best county? Best county. I love Kerry. That's a great county. Yeah. Well, I, the, Antrim, I, Antrim's underrated, though, I'm going to say. Because oh, absolutely. Because we just go... It's because we're from Antrim. The coast? It's because... We, like, look at the coast. Look at... Uh, like Jan's Causeway, all that, because it's so commonplace to us. Mm. You know, you went out for the day, you went up right, it's only around the corner kind of thing. So, but people from other parts of the world. People do get on as if Donegal is the answer to some great problem. It's I the don't answer know it to is. if you ever see me in it again, shoot me. Right. Right. Um, 
It's beautiful on a nice day, but a, a nice day is enough of it. Aye. Uh, right? There's there's one more question that I need to ask you here. Um, well, I'm saying mayo. I like mayo as well. Mayo, as some people call it, which sounds like something you put on a sandwich. Here's one. Uh, menstru- this is the last one, and then we'll, we'll finish. Minstrels or Maltesers? I'm going to throw this out there. If you're at the cinema and you get minstrels and put them into your popcorn. So minstrels for me also makes you think about we traveling musicians. Traveling musicians? Minstrels. All right. Okay. You can see where I was going, can't you? Straight into the fucking old tarmac your drive for you territory. So go ahead. You think a traffic and travel report's going to be like what's happening up on the Glen Road? You know what I mean? Up in the camp? Go ahead. Um, Maltesers Maltesers. or minstrels? Maltesers. Look what you've done. Mal- Look what you've done to her. <laughs> Go ahead. Ma- I know, struck me dumb. Give mm-hmm. me a box of Maltesers and I'll eat it in about five minutes. And right. I mean a box. I can't <laughs> stop. And I can't stop. See, see, I hide them in the, I hide them in the fridge. I don't go in and get them. You should have seen the look I got this morning. See, see when I was in Tesco buying ten packets of biscuits this morning. The look that I, the the guy. Oh, here's. Why didn't you go through the self checkout and nobody look at you? I hate the self checkout. You have to touch things. Disgusting. Anyway, touch the screen where other people have put their big fucking gummy. People pick their teeth with their fingers. I don't want to touch the fucking screen. Anyway, don't even start me on this. People don't set their stuff up on the belt. What? People have belts going round and round. Every Tom, Dick and Harry has set stuff on it. You clean the belt if you're at the till. That's when you were at the till. That's when Twanky was Lord of, of Tesco's. When I was the checkout chick. Kabloop. Anyway. Right. They, no, they don't clean it. No, they don't. Don't do you, you ha- tell me. Do you have a club card? That's you now. Kabloop. A wee club card? Do you know what I used to genuinely do whenever I was... It's a wee club card. See, when I was trying to get sacked. I was trying to get sacked out of Tesco because I was taking a career break and I didn't give a fuck anymore. If people, See, if you were the sort of person that came up to the till and said to me, Oh, I've just forgotten something. I've got to fuck off. Kevin, Could Kevin, you pack my groceries for me? Mate, if you had a loaf, I was... You were getting eight slices of bread with my thumb print through it. Go ahead. Mushrooms, do you like them crushed? Hope so. You See, you've given me a complex yogurts, for saying that. Yogurts, do you want them in under your fucking four stone bag of potatoes? <laughs> you've given me a complex of doing that, but Fuck because them. there's a time comes when you do forget something, like, I'll be back in a minute. Oh. I don't do it anymore. Don't. I actually was in Marks and Spencer's. Never leave Not Tesco's. m and I was in the other day, and I was through the self-checkout with their wee beep beep because it's handy, right? I was through it and all when I spied the one thing that keeps my life ticking over the Irish news because mm-hmm. I need to know if I'm on page 20. If I'm not on page 20, I get on with the day, right? right. Just checking to see if I'm in here. <laughs> I just look at the bees. If it doesn't say oh, Bartlett, do you know I'm away. Dead? I don't do the dishes. Do you know who's dead? <laughs> great, great conversations. What I love, first of all... Oh, no. That's sweet, Brady. Never near. Go ahead. Uh, your daddy used to say I got more information out of the death page than he got out of you the can, whole paper. You can... Because I knew who was you, who. You don't even read the death page no, anymore. You just, you just run your from. hands over it and go... And, like, you know who's dead. We do need to wrap this up. Right. I just need to say this very quickly. See the guy who, when I was buying them biscuits this morning in Tesco, when it was my turn to get served, and he signed off a tell and walk away? I hope you get COVID. Go ahead. <laughs> Fuck that guy. That's what he did to me. He, he took one look and went, he's diabetic, and he walked away. You know what he thought, did you? I know what he you thought. You should have said... He him. looked at me, he looked at the 10 well, packets of biscuits. you should have done what I did. And he signed out and goes, and do you know what he did? He literally goes, I've just signed out there. And he walked away and I went, I'm going to fucking fly No, you didn't say you. anything. I didn't. I didn't. Do you know so, why? I said it all in here and I went like, do you know what I did? I went like this. That's no problem, sir. You shouldn't have done that. See, you should have used my wee line and let on there was, you know, you had a. Sp- no, can't say that. Do you know what? Brilliant. You should have used my wee line, get us all cancelled. I'd say, no, no. Just as if you were writing an email and you should have said, thank you very much for your assistance in this matter. Oh my God. <laughs> on that bombshell, on that note, 
thank you Mo Bartlett for coming on thank you for wrapping my presents unbelievable that's an amazing present that frame signed photo of Bunter Castles how oh I um, something else too for yourself Just another no, present no it's oh I have two things Sarah because I know you're waiting for William to come and then somebody else so you'll have time to read a book and I found this belonging to you last night to be fair this is a great great book the three little pigs my version of it wonder if Kevin and Declan how, how old is that book no how old is it don't look a minute how old is it must be from the 80s like Go 30 on. years I, it's what? more than one like Fiona has written on it Karen Barton at age, age three. 3 1989 mate Jesus and that is another copy of your Bunter's photo oh unbelievable that you can give away or whatever as a gift to somebody and there's Look your at Sharpie. that picture of the big bad wolf getting fucking roasted. Anyway, go ahead. And that's what happens. That's what will happen to you if you sign out and walk away from me again, you dick. That's an extra. Thanks a million. So you can have that bag for, for something oh, thanks. special. Thanks, something okay. special for me. Right, well, thank you very thanks much very for much having me. Thanks very much for coming me. on. It was lovely. Thanks very much for having me. Take it easy. See you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Oh, no.